What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Today video we're gonna talk about entrepreneurial burnout. How to avoid burnout. I have a special guest today with me. His name was Clifford Stark. He is a former American UFC fighter who compete in the middleweight division for the World Series of Fighting. He traveled many lives through his coaching and training. Now I am so glad to coach him by him to thrive my business. This video is going to be in two parts. The part two is going to be down in the description. Make sure you guys check it out after watching this video. Alright, let's get started. Alright, what's up Clifford? Hey, how you doing Mike? Yeah, thank you for joining. I'm, I'm so excited to have you here with me today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, man. Yes, yes. Buffer, let me ask you this first question. Why do you love what you do? I love what I do because I get to wake up in the morning and make my own personal decisions. Um, my dad told me about responsibility at a young age, and I have held on to it. So the, the beauty of life is knowing that you're living and knowing that you can take action in it. Wow, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Tell me more about your, your dad. So he's actually, on a technicality aspect, he's my stepdad. Um, I, call, I call the other dad the sperm donor, and <laughs> I, don't have any, I don't have any gripes against him, but he literally kind of, he left as quickly as he came. And my, my dad stepped in, my real dad, to me, because he showed me what it took to be a man. You know, he taught me things that I don't know if I would have learned without him. And so one thing he did when I was much younger, he took me in front of a mirror and he said, whatever happens in your life happens because of you, the good and the bad. You take responsibility for the consequences that happen to you. And it really stuck with me. And so from it just it. It, he kind of passed the torch of power over, if, if I could say it any other way. Like, when you take responsibility of your life, it's fulfilling and it's empowering. And it makes you realize, even if you can't, you can be victimized in life. That can happen. But that doesn't mean you have to play victim. And so I've held, I've held on to that ever since and just kind of lived my life the way that I want to live my life. That's powerful, man. That's really powerful. And, Thank you. And and you take re responsibility of your life. That's actually like you don't blame anyone. This is mm -hmm. your own fault to make this happen. If you yeah. make a mistake, you're the one who'll be blamed. You know why young and millennial love their passion so much, but they can't take any action toward their dream. Um, I think it's a process, and it's really the mind playing tricks the thing is we have different problems in each society you know and at one time like we have this mind and we're never really taught how to use it properly and so one of the most empowering things a person can do is to have thought but to act on the thought and we're never really taught to do that even in incremental steps, we go to a school, we're taught to always do our very best mm -hmm. and not only do our very best, but get the good grade. And failure is almost seen as a bad thing. And so when people get afraid of that, they're paralyzed to act. And then we ask ourselves, well, why don't you just do it? It's like falling off of a bike. Well, we've been conditioned so long to fear failure in a way that we don't do anything worth failing. We do small, small things because we know we can't fail at it. And so if you allow people to fail and cheer them on because they really are doing their best or learning a different way of doing things or understanding a different way of doing things, and it starts, it starts with everybody. It's not one person. It's not, you just do it, you just become. Because it goes back to my story with my dad. See, my dad passed it on to me. He gave it to me. 
he allowed me to have my responsibility. I was a kid. And so everybody's, everybody plays a role. Even me and you having this conversation, yeah. we might inspire an entrepreneur to take action because they're hearing it saying, that's the thing that I'm missing. That's, that's so true. And, and a lot of people from school, actually from the A, a earner and then who also like always get high school, always on the top of the game. And the C person always come out in life more success than the A people. The reason I think believe is they, the C people asking for help all the time, but the A people don't need any help. And that's yeah. in real life is different because you need help. It doesn't matter. People, company, they do the team. They don't do solo, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely truth in that. It's, it comes down to knowing there are no self-made millionaires to know that it takes an entire team yeah. to run any kind of company or run anything worth doing anything. Honestly, yeah. when, you, when you talk about look at the bigger picture, well, the bigger picture is taking care of not only yourself, but everybody who's around you as well. Yeah, that's so true, man. Why some entrepreneur and YouTuber as well burn mm -hmm. out? Burning out? Yes. Yeah. Um, not, a, not an intelligent enough plan. I think it comes down to planning. And I, you've, you ever heard of the SMART plan? Specific, yeah. measurable, obtainable, uh, relevant, and time management. And so if you don't have a SMART plan, you can't maintain. Like, we are human beings. And I, I do believe our potential is limitless, but I do believe it takes a correct structure to get to where you need to go. It's the same thing as if I was going to have you run for a mile and you knew you, you knew it was a mile, but you ran it like it was only 100 yards, mm -hmm. you can't maintain. You're going to burn out. And that's the same thing that happens when people get themselves in trouble. They try and bite off more than they can chew, and it's too much, and they'll, that's when the excuses start coming in. I can't do this. I'm not good enough. I, it's too hard. It's too this, this, that. Well, the plan was incorrect. You have to have a plan within the, the process. Willpower is important, and willpower is a need. And willpower can increase. You know, you can always improve willpower. Yeah. But it, it's in stages. It's, it's if I were to put someone under a bench press, and I know they can only bench 200 pounds, but I'm going to put them under 400 pounds, that's going to crush your chest. Yeah. You know, like you yeah, can that's you up to it. Yeah, you can work up to it, but you better have a plan or you're going to fail. So if you don't plan, then you're planning to fail. <laughs> That's a call. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Now, how, how do you prevent it to burn out? How do I prevent burnout? Yes, how you prevent burnout, yes. Um, really, I always have some sort of strategy in the back of what I do. There's always reason behind the things that I do. And I think it's, it's funny because people say they have their reasonings and I'm not bashing people, but when people say they're at a nine or a 10 for something, they're really not at a nine or 10. And I remind them of that by asking them the very difficult questions. And it's, it always comes down to continued learning, continued action. So I ask questions like, what books have you read? What actions have you taken? What things have you, who have you talked to? Like people don't realize how important that is. Who have you talked to? Have you talked to your friend down the street who doesn't have any money about making money? Well, that's probably not the best person to talk to, you know? And so you become the habits that you consistently do. And so now it's, it's kind of second nature for me to go all in because I've learned to go all in at a young age at a lot of things so then it just becomes a habit and the funny thing is anybody can do that too it just comes down to putting the roadmap together correctly so i just have a quote uh, on my facebook just now it's like you don't have to be a genius but you have to be a learning machine yeah and then take action too as well mm -hmm. and i don't know if you have have you ever read the book called relentless 
by Tim Grover. Yeah, great book. I love that book. I just finished it. <laughs> yeah, it's an amazing book. Yeah, it's just making Especially me, when you're yeah. thinking, there's one specific uh, chapter in there where he's talking about taking the athlete through a diet, like a very intense diet, and taking out all of the sugars and knowing, I know if you're doing it right or if you're not, because that's so true. It's like when you give 100%, that he teaches people to give a hundred percent, like yeah. go all in. Yeah. And sometimes that's not the easiest thing to do, but you will be thankful on the other side of that. Yeah, I know. It's, it's takes time. It's, it's, it's really sacrifice. What are you going to sacrifice? Because if you be, want to become a cleaner, uh, that's what the term he say cleaner is mean, what are you going to be sacrificed? And doesn't matter what, what everybody do. You just go back to work, 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 yeah. work. So absolutely, yeah. So the 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 beauty thing he's saying like you have to up, obsess with success. If you don't, you can be cooler or you can be closer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. It's a hundred percent true. So and, and anyone who call themselves a cleaner, they probably not. <laughs> probably not. Yeah. 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 But the uh, world would call you a cleaner. You don't have to call yourself one. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I love it because he's saying this. You don't need to go there and fear people. People fearing you. You hide. You, you do what you have to do. And then when you come out, it's a tsunami all over you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's true. Yeah, yeah. So my next question is, I see a lot of success people out there make a lot of money, but why do they not happy? Yeah, that's a scary one, actually. I had, uh, there was, I'm not going to go into the details of this person, but I mean, the guy's legitimately, he's got millions upon millions and he's not happy with what he's got. We like struggle and we like pleasure. We like both. You know, we like, so they say people try to avoid pain and they seek pleasure, right. but without any kind of balance, it kind of, it consumes you and it consumes you in such a way it becomes a dangerous thing. Mm -hmm. And so happiness doesn't start outwardly. It starts inwardly. Yeah. And so when people go after, they're like, I'm going after this thing because it's going to make me happy. It doesn't make you happy. Happiness is inside, but excitement, excitement is another thing altogether. So excitement is happiness and, and success meeting together, or even the pursuit of success. Some people just like the pursuit of it. Yeah. And so you get to figure out what works best for you. Mm -hmm. But when you know those, those kind of strategies on, I know I'm happy in here. I feel good in here, but I'm going after this thing because I know that's exciting. Yeah. And it's funny when I, when I train people, right? I'll have a person, like I'll give a perfect example. If I have a 300 pound client and they're not feeling good about themselves, they don't love themselves. They're beating themselves up. I have to get them happy with them first. I have to get them to learn to love themselves first. That's the first process. And honestly, that makes all the other processes much easier. And so when they go down 100, 150 pounds, that's the best feeling to them ever. But they were already that person before they even got there. Yeah. That's where it gets funny. You're already there before you're there. You have to be there in your mind. And then you take the process. Then you take the journey. And that's where the fun is. Like, that's where the fun lies. Just saying it's all about the journey isn't well just enjoy the journey like there's going to be tough times in the journey there's going to be easy times during the there's just going to be a lot of different times during the journey yeah. and that's what it is it's not this i need this stamp that says i'm here it's never that I know. it's never that yeah. and i think that's where people get in trouble sometimes because they say if you chase this thing and once you obtain this thing this is where you're going to be no, you can be a happy millionaire and you can be a sad millionaire. You can be a depressed millionaire. You can be a joyous millionaire. The thing comes from inside you 
And I truly mm. believe that the people who are willing to take action, they believe first, envision themselves first, and then they and then become a potential. And that transfer to massive action, and from there, recur to believe. You see the whole mm. cycle there? Yeah, Absolutely. that's what I, I believe too. And why they failed the art of fulfillment. Let me give you an example like Robert Willem. I, I probably, you know him. He's actually mm. is the best actor. He's the best comedian. He's, he get a work for being a silent actor. He still, mm. and he make everybody happy, but himself at the end, he hung himself. Fulfillment's an interesting, an interesting topic. So let's say you have infinite potential in, in good and in bad. And so as a human being, if you have this void in you, the only person who can fill the void in you is you. And it's one of the hardest things to do. It's, it, it's kind of a hard lesson to obtain for some people because they feel it's this external thing. And for me, balance is having the internal and the external in proper alignment. Because you can't, you can't just be properly aligned internally either. I know people say that, and, and my belief is it starts internal, but there is an external there too. If you're internally like feeling good about yourself, and you're around people who are constantly trashing you and beating you down, then that's not healthy. If you're, if you're feeling good about yourself and you're around a bunch of honestly leeches who are just building you up, but they're doing it in a non-genuine way, that's not a healthy thing either. But if you're internally strong and you have an internally strong structure and you surround yourself with people who also have that internally strong structure and they work together for individual matters, but also for the group effort, that's when it really comes down to empowerment. I think that's where true empowerment lies. Mm -hmm. And so when, when you're trying to find this balance, it's not necessarily the easiest thing to do. Like some people, even in the Instagram world, you'll see people posting how great they are or how much they have or how, and it's just like, I want that. I want that. I want that. And all that your dopamine is just going all over the place. It's just like, I, I'm not good enough. I'm not this. I'm not there. I'm not where. And it's like, all right, step back, get quiet with yourself, with your mind, with your spirit, get quiet, listen, understand what you need, understand where to go to get what you need. And we're never taught those things. We're never taught how to listen to our mind. We're never taught that our minds are kind of nutty too. Like that's the honest truth. Mm -hmm. So when we're put in crazy situations, when we're put in hectic situations, when, when we have the strain of you got to be better, you got to be better, you got to be better, you cannot stop. You cannot stop. And at the same time, if you're not better, you are worthless. See, the balance is I always want to be better. I always want to get better. I always want to move forward. But I feel whole. I don't need that to make to define me on who I am. I can forgive myself. I can love myself. And then I can move on and keep getting better and keep growing more and do the things that I need to do and be okay with the process. Be okay with it. And that's where some people get in trouble, especially the highly successful. That's, it's kind of hard because you get to hear the saying, it defines you. And that's scary. That's when things get scary. When Every, you're defined by that thing. And that's where you can get in trouble. And it can happen to anybody, even me as a father. And this is why I do so much reading. Uh, I love psychology. It's very interesting to me. But me as a father, as my son gets older, our roles are going to change a little bit. And that's the beauty of the process. I can't always use the dad card. He'll be 30 making his own decisions and I'll be like, but I'm your dad because that's what I'm defined as. So I'm always going to be your dad and I'm always going to be his dad. I'm always going to love him, but I'm also going to realize 
life is going to change. Life is going to have its ebbs and flows. Yeah, man, that's a very powerful thing. People, comment below if oh, you yeah. have the situation like this. This is powerful. If you think this resonates you, comment yes <laughs> down comment below this is freaking awesome i love it now thank you mike yes yes because not many people can hurt this message like we we've been bombarded with social media and and mm. all this young people they crave into the the fake lifestyle like you know they are in ferrari and all that stuff when they see that there's two things happen jealousy or envy and that's very mm. negative for your mindset. It's, it's very yeah. bad, you know? Very true. What advice are you going to give for a young hustler overcome their boredom toward their dream? Sometimes if you get bored, realize why you're doing what you're doing. If you can realize why you're doing what you're doing, it helps you move in the direction that you need to move into. With that said, Playing within subconscious structures is very important as well. And if you're self-sabotaging yourself without even realizing you're doing it, it can get very frustrating. That's why it's important to get the right coaches, the right mentors, the right people on your team who can help you through the process, who can help you through those tough times, who can make you see things in ways you might not have seen them before. And that's where, that's where people can kind of get in trouble is if they don't see the final finished product or understand what steps to take with the roadblocks in their way, that's hard. That's hard for anybody. If you're banging your head on the wall consistently and nothing's changing and you're trying and you're trying, effort alone isn't enough. And I think that's where people get in trouble is they say, you got to work. You got to work hard. No, no, you don't have to work hard. You got to work smart. No, you got to do both. You have to work hard. It's a must. It's not going to happen without that. But you also have to work smart too. You have to learn from your failures. You have to figure out the best strategies. You have to figure out the best ways. And if you're 21 and you have a nice bank account to do that and you don't need coaching, you can do that too. You get that option. Just remember, if you're 21 and waiting to get it at 41 versus finding a mentor who could help you and guide you and get you there in two years or three years, that's that person's option. And that's where it comes down to. Yeah, that's just very powerful. That's a message. Like if you want to get something that you want to be in the future, like you envision yourself going to become that person, then you need to hire somebody same like that to show you the roadmap. And very mentor is everything because it's like yes. it teach you the shortcut to what you want to be in life. Yeah, and I, I would not it's be my, my I would not be like me right now if I don't have a mentor who showed me the roadmap. You know. Yeah, I mean the same. Like they teach you. Sometimes you need to know when to act, and sometimes it's not good to act. Even you know, sometimes there can there's such a thing as too much action and incorrect action yeah. and you don't want to do that either so, so one last question where do people finding you clifford so they can find me at info at cliffordstarks.com or they can actually email me contact me get a hold of me you can also find me on my website at cliffordstarks.com you can facebook me as well i'm pretty easy to facebook messenger you just look for clifford starks Look for this face, the pretty face with the dimples. <laughs> there you go, there you go. And that's how you do it. Yep. yep. Mike, it was an absolute pleasure. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me and thank you for having you to be here. I'm pretty excited. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for sharing your knowledge. This is very valuable stuff. Thank you, brother. Yeah, thank you. Let's keep growing. Yes, yes, yes. I will see you next time, man. If you want to learn more about mindset, mentality, toughness, check out Clifford video right here. If you want to learn more about how to make money online like a boss, tap the screen right here. Making sure you subscribe to his channel and watching part two. I will see you next time.